Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder fallout. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego in the back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work him. Yesterday, I did a video about Tyson Fury, who did the same thing. He gave his thoughts on Joshua Wilder falling out. Joshua likely to fight Povetkin next. We don't know who Wilder's going to fight. And check that video on the channel. Lennox Lewis, on his verified account, did the same thing. And I want to read it, what he said, and give some follow-up thoughts. Lennox Lewis says, My thoughts on Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder's situation are that when I was champ, I wanted to face the best to show the world who's the best, period. I've heard them both speak on it, but I've also seen that AJ has changed his tune. This isn't a two year down the line thing. That's what he says. We'll go on to the next one. Promoters have their own interest in making most money they can, but fighters also carry weight in who they fight. If both sides wanted this fight, it would be happening. End of story. AJ taking Povetkin fight first isn't a deal breaker for Wilder though. Just don't like the two year talk. Then he goes on to say, I'm not in all in on all the details for Joshua Wilder negotiations, but when I wanted to fight Mike Tyson before retiring, the only thing keeping that fight away was the networks. I told my team and HBO to make it happen. End of story. I don't want to hear about anything else. That's true because Mike Tyson, I believe after he got out of prison, had moved on to Showtime and you had Lennox Lewis who was fighting guys like Haseem Rahman and whatnot on HBO. HBO was like the kingpin of, of premium boxing. He follows up by saying this, the way I see it, AJ is the man. He gets to choose the time and place for the first fight. I'd make Wilder come to me also, but from what I see from Wilder, Deontay Wilder, he's willing to do it. And this is the same attitude I would have. When the heavyweight division finally has a pulse, we need action, not talk. Boom. So to me, it sounds like Lennox Lewis, and this is just my interpretation. You guys can interpret it how you want. He sounds like he's just out. He's weighing out the situation. But I think he really knows. He, he's still kind of trying to play it neutral. But it sounds like he knows what's going on. Because, I mean, listen to what he said. He says, if I was if I was the person, I would make Joshua, I would make Wilder come to me. But he also says right here that Joshua has changed his tune. And he doesn't like this two year down the road thing. And that all came not from Wilder's side, but from Joshua's side. Joshua is the guy on Sky Sports sitting on the apron of a boxing ring talking to Johnny Nelson saying, oh, devil on one shoulder, angel on the other shoulder. Um, I might happen, the fight might happen 2018, 19, 2020, whenever. I'm not gonna be rushed, uh, you know, I'm still developing. And Johnny Nelson even said, oh, it just sounds so weird um, that you're a champion and you said oh, you're not going to let anyone rush you. So even your own compatriot, your own countryman was kind of caught off guard by that. So I think Lennox Lewis is being open without trying to make it look like he's he's covering either side too extensively. But it sounds like he's he understands what's going on and... See, the beauty of this fight versus Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson, or Mayweather Pacquiao when it was supposed to happen the first time is you don't have the same politics at hand here. Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis, you had networks. Pacquiao, Mayweather, you had network issues. Floyd had went to Showtime. Pacquiao was on HBO. Pacquiao didn't want to take a drug test. We don't have those issues with Wilder Joshua yet, and still, we're not getting the fight next. That's a problem. There's no argument over Vada testing. There's no argument over... Hey, Joshua doesn't work with Showtime because his last fights, all of his his championship where he became a champion with Charles Martin was on Showtime and all of his title defenses since up to Joseph Parker have been aired in the United States via Showtime. That's where Wilder's had hit most of his uh, recent fights too on Premier Boxing Champs. So we don't even actually have an issue yet and still you have one side who's making more issues than needed, right? And... Like I said, the world sees it. Tyson Fury says straight out. See, Tyson Fury, he's 
he doesn't care about political correctness, stuff like that. Lennox Lewis, you know, I'm sure he has ties to different people, but Tyson Fury don't give a fuck. He gonna say what he wants, even if it hurts people's feelings. Tyson Fury said, and again, I did a video on it. He says, Eddie Hearn knows that Wilder's style is all wrong for Joshua, so he's giving him some in-between fights to build his confidence and learn on the job and stuff before he gets chinned by Deontay Wilder. That's, that's what Tyson Fury says. Lennox Lewis, he's uh, more subtle with it. The way I see it, AJ's the man. He gets to choose the time and place. I would make Wilder come to me. But see, this is this is the problem. Wilder says you could come out here to the United States where you'll make more money or I'll come to you. That wasn't even an issue. So we know what time it is. Wilder is, Wilder is not the one who has a complaint with the location for the first fight. He says, Come to us that's where the money's at you'll make more money out here but i'll also come to the uk for a fair deal joshua it is joshua's side eddie hearn anthony joshua's side they're the ones that say for the first fight we don't want to come to america even though eddie hearn was trying to make klitschko fight with joshua a rematch after joshua knocked out klitschko and he was 41 years old and he would have been coming off of two losses they were trying to make that in america in las vegas and the only reason it didn't happen is klitschko surprised the world i woke up and there was a tweet from Klitschko, hey, it's been a fun journey, I'm retiring. That's the only reason the fight didn't happen, the rematch. And then Eddie Hearn also did an interview that's on YouTube where he talked about Gerald Big Baby Miller, if he looks good in his last fight with Johan Duhapis, which he did, came out dressed like the Black Panther, T'Challa and all this, and he looked good, dominated one every round. Eddie Hearn said before the fight, if he looks good, we'll come to the Barclays, where Gerald Miller is from, Brooklyn, and that's a, a definite candidate if he looks good for Joshua. But all of a sudden it comes to Wilder and $50 million and we won't come out to America. We got to do it for the fans. So why weren't you saying that with Klitschko too? What about the UK fans then? Why weren't you saying that when you opened your mouth and said the Gerald Miller fight can happen where Gerald Miller is from in Brooklyn, right? What about the interview with DBN where Joshua says, oh yeah, we could fight in Vegas, no problem, no problem right so again it's not consistent from the joshua side you haven't heard shelly finkel say we'll go to the uk and then wilder's like fuck no nah, i ain't fighting in the uk you haven't heard that you heard shelly finkel say hey for the record we said we'll go to the uk or he could come to the usa wilder's saying the same thing steven espinal anybody affiliated with wilder is not jd's the co-trainer mark breland None of them are getting on the record. I haven't seen one credible interview from any of them where they said Wilder is unwilling to go to the UK. So again, we know what the problem is. So good luck with DAZN. Um, you have people like Tyson Fury, who's a unified champion before his own personal demons forced him to get rid of his belts. It's not like someone took his belts from him, right? Bad decisions in his personal life did that. He's telling you what it is. Lennox Lewis is pretty much telling you what it is. He says, I would make Wilder come to me also, but it sounds like Wilder is willing to. That's the attitude I would have when the heavyweight division finally has a pulse, we need action, not talk, which I agree with. And you know what the funny thing is? I hated Lennox Lewis. You know, being a young kid, I was a, Mike Tyson, my favorite fighter. Mike Tyson, Prince Nassim, and Roy Jones. So just off of, you know, foolish pride, I didn't really give Lennox Lewis a, a chance. And the way he would talk and, you know, he sound all pronounced and proper. I didn't like the guy. Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't a fan of his. Mike Tyson was beefing his. It's just like you, you, you pick sides, especially when you're young-minded. But I told you guys for a while on the channel, I, I grew to really respect the fuck out of Lennox Lewis. You know, I actually met him in Vegas too. Um, I just respect him because every loss that he had, he came back and avenged that loss. Oliver McCall, Hasim Rahman, he stopped those guys. You know, he, he's, he's, he's not just saying it, he's really about what he says. What he says, the heavyweight division has a pulse, we need action. I mean, this dude fought everybody. He fought Evander Holyfield, it wasn't no draw, you know what I mean? Um, he could have fought Riddick Bo, but I don't know what happened with that. He fought Mike Tyson. He fought David Tua. He fought Shannon Briggs, Oliver McCall, right? Klitschko, the, the better Klitschko in prime. You know, he fought everybody.
So I respect the fuck out of Lennox Lewis. He's he's a he's a real one. And when he's saying this, you have no choice but to whether you like him or not, you have no choice but to take his word for it because he would have done it. He is about the best, for, like the best, and his resume shows you that. I seen Rockman. He underestimated him. I remember they had the Ocean's Eleven movie with Brad Pitt, and he was in it. Him and Klitschko. They had like a scene, and I heard he got. I think the fight was in South Africa or something. He got there late and didn't have time to acclimate. He was filming a movie and stuff like that. He didn't think much of Hasim Rahman. And that's that's when you get caught, when you least expect it. But then now after he got knocked out, he got that, you know what I mean, woke up the sleeping giant, the champion, and then he showed you in the rematch and came back and knocked Hasim Rahman out. You know what I mean? Tommy Morrison win, rest in peace. Lennox Lewis, he, he's a beast, resume. So when, when I hear a guy, like a champion, who's saying these things, I believe him because his resume supplements that. Let me know what you guys think of this whole Joshua Wilder mess. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe to the next video. It's Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Thank you.